As for Surye, in him, Bonaparte had a very different man indeed. Born in Loen, 54 years earlier, the son of a royal mole catcher for the breeding stables of Louis XV, the young man was surprisingly granted a commission in a militia battalion in 1755, then integrated into the regular army, serving in the Seven Years' War, but thereafter limited in advancement because he was not of noble birth. Thanks to the revolution, however, he was a colonel by 1792 and was promoted to Major General a year before joining Napoleon at Nice. He was one of the few general officers during the empire to have served in a regular capacity as a career officer before the revolution. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. This is Ragnarok here with part three of my Napoleon Italy campaign. We're off to a little bit of a rocky start, uh, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we're, it, things could be worse. Things could be, could be much worse. So I, I think we're coping with the... Uh, the situation we had a very tough battle here at uh, Kony and um, yeah just m basically blundered the uh, the deployment but anyway we're getting the the troops are replenishing very quickly just in behind here I was thinking to possibly go for Turin and this turn but it looks like we're not gonna have enough movement to reach there so what I'm thinking is, rather than attack it straight away, maybe we'll send Napoleon to take Nura, and, and then we can swing around this way and attack, attack turn next turn. Now the only problem with that is, I don't think these reinforcements are going to make it there unless we bring them up to here. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to bring everybody, everyone, but the general there. And I'm just wondering if this, if our cavalry will get a little bit additional movement if they're paired with the general. Alright, we'll continue siege. And it does look like the cavalry have been granted additional movement here. Hmm, that is interesting. All right, so that's good. Anyway, we'll bring the cavalry in because it'll be, it'll be helpful in this situation. We want to take the least amount of casualties possible. And it looks like we can probably actually auto-resolve this one. Odds are pretty good. We can even demand surrender. Let's actually do that. That way we don't lose anyone at all. <coughs> Excuse me. So if there's an army sitting inside the settlement and you demand the surrender, I believe the army is spared. Spared? Spared? I don't know. Anyway guys, I should apologize. I am a little bit under the weather and actually I think it. I started coming down with the, uh, with the illness just as... Uh, I started recording the series, which could be could be why the tactical decisions weren't uh, weren't quite as good as they could have been. Maybe it could be why I was a little bit off. Actually, let's take a look at the yeah income next turn only three forty six. So definitely need to get the income going in. But this settlement is going to be a lot tougher to take. I'm pretty sure they're going to have their main army there. That's their capital. Monsieur. I really want the additional replenishment by keeping them here, but we also need to get them there Allez next turn. Marché. So and I move them up. Unfortunately, ah man, just quite the difference. But. Anyway, at least we're getting additional replenishment by not attacking this turn, and we should be able to get both armies there. And with any luck, we can absorb most of the casualties on the newer recruits. So that's the plan anyway. And this time around, we've got, we'll have got we have quite a bit of cavalry here for this fight coming up, so it should be in good shape. Uh, we should probably be seeing some of the Austrians coming through here soon. And we want to finish off... Piedmont and Sardinia as quickly as possible. We'll take the capital 
uh, which will uh, force an armistice, but will also send some troops back this way to take uh, their final settlement. So we don't have to worry about them. I, I, them uh, declaring war on us while we're off doing something else. Yeah, right on cue. There are the Austrians. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my only... I, I played this campaign maybe like a couple of years ago. And that's exactly what happened was the... Oh my. The... Once you force the armistice, once you get moving this way and all of a sudden your troops aren't there, then Piedmont uh, declares war on you again and you've got to backtrack to deal with them. And in a campaign where time is of the essence, uh, you definitely don't want to be doing a ton of backtracking. What size forces do we have here? Out of curiosity's sake. Now that is a, that is a decent force. Could even go for Milan right now. Mm. It's just in kind of a bad position here. Now the problem is if they get behind our lines. All right, let's have you scout ahead. Take a look at what we've got. While we're facing this. Yeah, so uh, because I'm a little bit under the weather, I think this episode is going to air on the shorter side of things. And then probably the next episode, I'll try and make an hour long. But with half an hour on Tuesdays and an hour long on Thursdays for the time being. Is there? We could send. Huh. Two, four, six, and two, four, five. <coughs> so, if we do this attack here on turn. We're going to have to split our. Oh, for fuck's sake! Why the fuck do you not have enough movement to get there? Because I think it's because he's standing in the way, or maybe he just doesn't have enough movement. Anyway, we've got enough movement with these guys, and Napoleon should be reinforcing. What I'm thinking is sweep back this way with Napoleon, get our forces consolidated here, take turn, we'll send a small force north. To take this final settlement and then we'll send our injured troops around this way to cut off the Austrians in uh, although problem with that is they won't get replenishment through here maybe we'll have to send them this way we just don't want them coming down this way to uh, to Nice that is for sure anyway we'll wait and see how this all plays out here Move you to there. Troupe, en avant. Monsieur, vos ordres. D'autres ordres. Go. Get you in there. Uh, let's see what happens. Oui, monsieur. We move him slightly out of the way. Marchez. A little bit more movement with Napoleon. Fortunately, we're not going to be able to deploy our artillery right away. I mean, we're going to lose some of these this territory, but we can regain it as we push back. Uh, the priority, eliminating turn right now, I think. That is far as you can make it. Fuck me sideways. Ah, uh, Dios mío. I don't think that he is going to be... Part of this battle. All right. Um. Oui. Oh my goodness. 
He doesn't even have enough this movement to siege it. Let's see if Napoleon is supporting here. He's not. Fuck. Village assiégé, prêt. Ah man, I really didn't want to use the movement uh, oui? movement exploit in this campaign. Uh, I was really gonna. Ah uh, yeah. Thing is, we need the replenishment here. Village assiégé. Not to Monsieur, mention, we're gonna lose a turn. All right, I'm not, I'm not going to use the movement exploit as tempted as I am, just to get Napoleon over here so we can do this battle right away. Problem is, they might even sally out against us here. All right, we can't really recruit. We probably going to lose the territory over here to the Austrians. Austrians, at least one settlement, anyway. Potentially two settlements. Um, I guess we'll. I think that way the population doesn't. Uh, I'm not sure. Hmm. They're gonna sally out against us. Fuck. He might be kind of fucked here. At least this army has got the support of Napoleon. I think. A lot of lion infantry here. We do have the cannons, and we do have a cavalry advantage, sort of. So if we can take them... Alright, this... Alright, I, th I think we can win this. I think we're going to be alright here. Napoleon should come in behind them. <coughs> we should have... We should be a little bit more mobile than they are. And the key will be to taking out their gun and their cavalry. If we can do that, then I'm pretty confident that we should be able to win here. No. Question is, where will Napoleon end up coming in? Okay, well, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm being. Damn this weather, sir! Wet powder Just makes misfires a sudden. Oh, you guys back here. Alright, the guns are on the right there. But they've separated their dragoons. I got one dragoon there, general is there, and then another dragoon there. If we can take out this um, set of dragoons initially, then we might have a chance. We gotta get Napoleon set up first. Fuck me. Like, right on top of them. Guys, get off to the side there. This is not a great place to deploy either. Fuck, we need to take those guns down. Come over here and deploy over here. Take those dragoons out at the same time. 
Some shots off. Fuck. Fuck, I don't think we got any shots off there. Get over here. Just hope we can overwhelm them with our numbers. Greens are obviously a better melee cab here. We can get in behind and get some shots in on them. Oh man, here comes there. I need to finish them off now. Come on. Shoot. Not going great. There we go. Come on, get out of there. Fuck. Our men are running, sir. Alright, don't worry about them. Should just back off this way. Guys, get over here. Get these guys set up before fucking. Uh, yeah. It's not looking good. Come on, get into position. The artillery is taking forever to get set up. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Ooh. Shit. Keep going. Need to get away from those uh, grenadiers. Well, send you guys by right the hell over there. Ah, Dios mío. I just need to get over here. Let's get over here. Stay put over there for now. Need to focus on the situation here. This could be a problem. We've got an opportunity to potentially get to their general here. Get our artillery. Charge through and break their center. Get to the general. Fuck, here come their dragoons. Alright, you, sir. Go for their. Go for their guns.
not looking good. I'm not gonna lie. Our men are running. Get in there. Limber. We have killed their general. Oh, beauty. They must that break. might save our ass here. All right, you guys get over here. Last resort, we can crash into this. Break them, we got a chance. Alright, you two. Our men are running for we are needed over here. Fuck me, even though we've broken their general. We're still breaking our troops. Ah fuck, we do need to run. Save the artillery. Our men are running for Come on. Surely we can break these guys over here. Just hold for a little bit longer, boys. We got the cavalry coming in. Man, what a mess this has turned into. I think we've got them though. Fuck me. Ah, I think we're gonna lose the artillery though. Which is gonna be very, very bad for the rest of the, com for the early part of the campaign here. Send this guy in, hopefully he can break them. Well, at least the settlement is going to be somewhat undefended now, so we should be able to... <coughs> should be able to take the settlement without too much trouble, but we're going to have to uh, rebuild our army here. And with the Austrians right around the corner... The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. There we go. Oh man, that was fucking close. Oh, Santa Maria. why the yeah, saving the games in this is so difficult what the fuck there we go oh uh, yeah wow Survived a bad situation, but fuck. Paid a heavy price for it. We lost one of the artillery pieces, but these two artillery are in bad, bad shape. Alright, let's get Napoleon, Napoleon over here. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, 
Opération de siège en préparation. Tenez-vous prêt. Votre humble serviteur. Troupe en avant. Should be able Monsieur, to isolate this army. Finish him off. Victoire. Yeah. I feel like we could have done a better job than that. And that's okay. En avant, marchez. Oui. Il se cache sous les jupons Monsieur. des femmes. À vous autres. Merge those. Votre humble serviteur. Les ports pourraient recevoir nos orcheries. Transfer over some troops here. And then we should probably merge some of these uh, some of these units here. Let's see if we can try and keep the rank on some of them. I think we lost the rank there. This one as well. Oops. All right, lost control of the uh, revolutionary line infantry. Guys have got a, a lot of chevrons, but we're gonna have to merge them anyway just to uh, to save money. We need to get the the numbers up. Let's see, put the layers of the line. I don't have anything really to merge them with. Alright. Looks good. I just want to test out as well that Asina comes first. Or, sorry, Surya comes first. All right, let's fight this and then we'll, we'll end the episode. This will take a couple minutes. Holy smokes. Yeah, definitely not how I envisioned the campaign going. Uh, my practice campaigns went way smoother than this. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm sick or... I don't know. I'm just nervous uh, <laughs> recording. I don't fucking know, but... Yeah, it uh, definitely hasn't gone exactly according to plan. The artillery on this little bit of high ground here, I think that's probably the best spot. Yeah. Should be able to... However, we could put it back in the corner here. Put it here. Actually, I think we'll... That we have, oh Monsieur. My gosh, more artillery. We're gonna have to recruit some more fucking artillery. Remember these. Cavalry. See the guys hidden in the forest here. Right, who's Terrible shape. 
Let's just stay back here and observe. And everybody else. Find you up there. You guys line up here. We'll stretch out once um once the battle gets started. Be relying on our reinforcements here a little bit though. But I'm curious to see if they come at us, if they attack us. This can all they put together. Cavalry force over here. Yeah, to be honest, I really considered, um, just I wasn't really happy with the first uh, first two episodes. And I really considered whether or not I was going to uh, scrap it and start over. But, I, I don't know, I just figured, you know, it would be more, more genuine campaign if I, you know, just uh, continued through where I was. So... Um, that's what we're doing, basically. I don't know, I think it makes for a more interesting campaign as well. But I, I just, yeah. Someday I have good days and bad days with the commentary, and for whatever reason, I always get really anxious or, or nervous before recording an episode one. I, you know, like I give a lot of thought into uh, what campaigns I'm going to be doing and um, yeah because each one of the campaigns is a, a pretty big commitment and I, I just want the campaigns to be as good as possible and I, I you know I've started doing like quite a bit of prep before campaigns like running like different uh, tests and things like that uh, before starting a new campaign and I, I just want the campaigns to go as well as possible and have the let's plays as good as possible on top of that but anyway I don't know where I was going with all that uh, that thought but they out of our range I guess they are alright they're at least obliging us in coming forward. up against armed militia but um, bonuses that they get on uh, the very hard difficulty will make them a little bit difficult to deal with I send the cavalry out here I'm gonna see if we can pick off the units on the edge there and we'll get these guys to cut off uh, to defend this flank here. Maybe we actually will send this guy out to help out. I was gonna keep him in reserve just because he's, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit depleted. Oh man, I still haven't got that double click down. Cavalry, attend the 
citizenry won't last too long against our, uh, our cavalry here. We are going to have to charge through and get to these guys before they get shot off. Trying to do the same thing over here with this cap. Against regular line infantry, cavalry are going to have a much harder time, especially if they can get themselves into into squares. Yeah, we're going to have to merge some of these these cavalry units up. It's okay. That'll save us a little bit of income next turn, and we'll start rebuilding our uh, our forces for our second push against Austria. You need to get over there and help them. And you, sir, actually come up over here and help them. Maybe ask our cavalry to do a little bit too much here. Our men are running, sir. Try this again. All right, I think I've got the hang of it now. Fier et victorieux. 215 losses, but a lot of that was on our cavalry, which we're, we're going to really need to defend on. Following a number of defeats at your hands, King Victor Amadeus of Piedmont, Sardinia has called for an end to hostilities. 
cowed at the prospect of seeing his nation crushed before the might of the French Republic, as well as abandoning the coalition against our glorious nation and officially relinquishing all former claims to Nice and its surrounding regions, the Kingdom of Piedmont, Sardinia, has agreed to grant the Army d'Italy full military access to its lands. Your deeds here today will have seriously compromised the Austrians' position in the region and have brought us to one step closer to defeating our enemies. Alliance broken. Following the buildup of suspicion and distrust in the nations, their alliance has broken. Austria and Piedmont Sardinia. Alright, we will peacefully occupy again, as tempting as the, uh, the money acquired. We could definitely use that right now. Um, and I need to get artillery back in the field. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to read another little passage from uh, Alan Schoen's Napoleon. And then we will uh, kick things off. We'll try and uh, get our tattered army back into uh, fighting shape and see if we can confront the Austrians. And we'll start focusing on pushing further west into, uh, into northern Italy here. Born at Versailles in 1753, Alexander Berthier also served as a regular army officer under Louis XV. His father had been commanding, commanding officer of the Royal Army Engineers, leading to his ennoblement in 1763. Unlike Aguero and Messina, Berthier was well educated and welcome in drawing rooms, despite his emotional high strung nature. He took a commission as an engineering officer in 1770, serving under Lafayette in the American War of Independence. He continued his career under the revolutionary government as a Major General of the Versailles National Guard and was now acting as Major General Bonaparte's Chief of Staff at Nice. He would remain at Napoleon's side ever obedient despite a constant flow of abuse from his chief until the spring of 1814. But from the beginning, the aloof Berthier disliked most of the French army commanders, a feeling they fully reciprocated. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Episode 4 will be next. Have a great day. Ragnarok signing out.